Podcast. We are the beautiful open channel, but what we start to realize, Carla, and you're, that's what you just experienced here, is that there is actually a choice that we can make to actually be a channel for more of our higher states of consciousness, more of our divinity, more of our pure creative love. So when we make a seemingly simple choice of changing a work environment, what you're doing, Carla, maybe for the first time in a long time, is you're now actually starting to channel your divine self. You're starting to channel the light aspects of you that have been waiting for, again, who knows how long, to be embodied through the physical form. Welcome to the Cosmic Love Antenna Podcast. This podcast is meant to encourage you to connect within so you can share your light with the world. And now, here's your host, Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Welcome, beautiful beings, back to another episode of the Cosmic Love Antenna. This is your weekly installment of your inner connection to your outer expression, where I, your host, Harrison, here with the lovely, beautiful soul that I'll be dancing with here today, set the intention of pulling back all the layers, restricting health, alignment, and love. And you've found yourself today on another community coaching episode where I've started doing these in a, in a new sort of loving way to really give you the listener and also the beautiful being who's on the on the show today some more precise, more direct, more direct coaching to the thing that's needed, right? And today on the show, we're going to get into all things expressing your beautiful gifts, right? How we can do that. If you would like to be a beautiful soul who's on, on an episode like this, how you can do it is, one, make sure you share this episode out with any friends, family members that can that you think can do you think can feel and and get some value out of this chat today. And two, head over to Apple and Spotify and leave your loving feedback and comments and reviews on this chat. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll pick a beautiful member of the community and uh, it might be you. So with all of that, Carla, welcome to the show. Welcome to this chat we're going to do today. How are you feeling, my friend? Oh, hello, Harrison. Thank you so much for having me. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling energized and tapping into the into the love. Yeah. And I know this topic, Carla, for you, this this theme of expressing your gifts has been a big has been a big part of your life very recently. I know it's been a part of your life for a while, but it's things have been ramping up. So before we get into your questions here and 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 helping other people listening, maybe you could share quickly, you know, this, this idea of starting to express your beautiful gifts with the world outside of you. Why is this important to you right now? It's it's important to me right now because it's I feel like I've been placed here on this earth to help people. And how am I supposed to help people if I'm not able to share my gifts, to use the power of my voice? And one day I just asked myself, what do I need to do? What actions do I need to take in order for me to achieve those goals and those aspirations? And it started with loving and accepting myself for who I am and shutting out the voices and the expectations of the outside world. Mm. It's big, Carla. And I'm so happy you shared that because you're not alone. As I was hearing you express that, you know, I feel all of the people that listen to this to this, uh, this episode today and have listened to this show throughout the weeks, your journey, while we're all unique, Right, there are similar themes that we all walk through, and I think your journey has a lot of those themes. So, with that, let's let's jump into your first question, my friend. What's the first question on your heart in regards to this topic today that I can help with? I would say, not just you know for myself, but you know for the collective. Why should we express our gifts for the world? Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny. The first thing that's bubbling up for me to answer to this question is you don't need to. And let me, let me explain what I mean by that. Cause that's, that sounds very paradoxical to everything we've said thus far. What I mean by that is many of us, myself included, I'm not sure about your background, Carla, but many of us have grown up in a religious context where we 
feel like there is a force outside of us that has a has a score sheet that's 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 ticking a yes or a no based off the actions that we're taking and what tends to happen within this expressing of the gifts that you're talking about Carla is that there and I talked about this yesterday on Instagram there becomes there's an archetype that we step into of the superhero and what we mean what I mean by that is that once we start to express our gifts we then feel like we need to continue to do that otherwise we're not doing the thing we're not reaching our potential so to answer your question in order to start to express our gifts and, and work out the reason why we first must release the expectation that we need to do we need to do it in the first place right carla you know this and i want to get your how this feels for you you know this from the fact that what are we made of we're made of love but what kind of love are we made of we're made of unconditional love so what that means is carla if you decide right now to step more into your beautiful gifts the answer is yes if right now you decide i don't want to do i don't want to have anything to do with my gifts today i just want to rest i want to stay home i just want to watch tv right i'm not saying you do that carla the answer is still yes so the step here my friend is removing all expectations that we need to do anything right this is why we have the incarnation this is why we have multiple lives right is this resonating my friend oh 100% and one thing that i've come to the realize the awareness that i've had was when we place those expectations on ourselves that i ne- i should be doing this or i need to be doing that it suppresses us even further it and it restricts us it for me f- physically i feel it in my body it's like i almost feel like my arms are being tied down in a way and i can't progress further i yes. get blocked yes and and carl let me add a the other side to this right cuz so what you're feeling there is that is the pressure of the expectation but let's say that we release that expectation and now we're open so now in that space if you then decide right okay now i want to express those gifts look going back to the question right what what it does to help the collective is that you now become an example of what is possible right you now become the light that we are all attracted towards right not because you have something that we don't but because you have something inside of you that's also inside of me so the reason that we want to start to express our gifts if we decide to do so is because it starts to help the collective awaken yeah absolutely and i found you know when once we release those expectations we can see that, that we can see that and we can feel it i feel more more open and i i start to see things expanding at a more rapid rate and just all these opportunities coming one right after another after another and it's just it's the most beautiful thing to experience and to be able to share and you know i would love to get your perspective on this as well um from my personal experience the environment that we place ourselves in and the an impact that it has on us being able to express our gifts the environment that we place ourselves in can that hinder us from being able to express our gifts and to share them with the world so i would say not only yes it can i would say it is top 3 if not the the most important factor to our expansion and what i mean by this is i would encourage people you know again who all the beautiful souls that listen to these shows these episodes you've heard me speak a lot about the inner child right and why is the inner child concept in the child healing so important it's one of the reasons is because it is our childhood environment that shapes us into the adults that we are right now in this moment and why why is it that it's because it is in that home in that caregiver setting it is in that cultural setting that religious setting that whatever the the upbringing involved it dictates what we are but what's important to realize here is that we have a choice in that but most of us feel like we don't right it let's say let me use a very specific example let's say that i i'll use one from my my upbringing 
let's say that as a child, I was told as a little boy that it is not a masculine thing to express my emotions, express my sensitivities, express my vulnerabilities. Well, despite that being so far from the truth, now based off my environment, I am being told that it is the truth. And because I'm a child that wants to be safe, wants to grow, I'm going to do the thing that makes me safe. And in that environment, the thing that makes me safe is to do what the external is saying and hide my emotions. So the short answer here is yes, Carla, but I want to empower you and I want to empower people listening to realize we always have a choice in the environment that we're in. So for example, if we are starting to recognize that my current environmental setting is hindering my spiritual expansion or my gifts from flowering, then I must ask the question, okay, what can I do to change that environment, right? Even if this means, right, stepping back from certain friends, stepping back back from certain family members, stepping back from certain work environments, stepping back from the media, the news, right? all these things. So the short answer is yes, Carla, but remember your power of choice within that. Yes, absolutely. And growing up, I was always told, be seen, not heard. It's a big one. Absolute big one. And I've let that carry over to my adult years up until I would say four years ago. I don't know what it is about when we hit 40, where we had like this epiphany, like this aha moment. But that's what happened with me. And I'm like, well, Carla, okay, all these me, things. Yes. Carla, let me ask you a question about that, that you might not mm-hmm. be aware of. In your in your 30s, did you go through your Saturn returns or you didn't? Did I what now? Do you know, what Saturn, do you know what Saturn returns is? Have you heard of Saturn returns? No. Okay. So that's why you had that epiphany in your 40, right? Because in our 30s, in our, when, we turn, when we go from 28, 20, 29 to 30, we have the opportunity to ground our spiritual being. But if we do not, for whatever reason, right? it sounds like you didn't take that opportunity, my friend, it comes back around again at 40. That's what people call their crisis, but it's what it is in reality is another opportunity to awaken their spiritual being. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense then, because I just, I started sticking up for myself when people started talking down to me like I was a five-year-old. And people started getting turned off by like, wait, who do you think you are to stand up to talk to me that way? And the more I started to stand up for myself, the more empowered I started to feel, the more free I started Mm -hmm. to feel. Mm -hmm. And this was all within my work dynamic. Mm -hmm. And just it was seven, eight months ago now, I left that toxic environment to where I felt I wasn't being heard. I wasn't being respected, anything. And ever since then, removing myself from that toxic environment, all of these creative downloads started happening. How much, not only mentally, but physically I feel it's, being able to hear myself think again yeah what you're doing in this situation and i'll explain this to everyone listening what you're doing here is you're taking your power back Mm -hmm. right and i'm going to explain something here i call that one of my mentors has taught me is called the story gap right and this is the the difference between the story that is actually inside of you that wants to be expressed and the story you're sharing with the world right and most of us and it sounds like you carla with this work environment we're saying very different things to what our internal story is telling us, right? We're, we're feeling a certain way and we want to make certain decisions and we want to do certain things, but then based off, again, work expectations, family expectations, friends' expectations, we then speak and share and do something completely different, right? But the, the reality and what happens here is the bigger the gap in that story gap, the more resistance, the more we step away from our creation energy. So for you, Carla, with you taking your power back and stepping into what you actually want to be doing in that moment, of course, you start to have a flurry of creation energy because that creation energy is what you are, right? And 
that doesn't have to be, and Carl, you know this, but just for people listening, we can actually be in a state where that creation energy is flowing all the time. And one of the ways we do that is by making sure the story that's inside of us is the same that we're expressing with the outside world. Okay. And in speaking of sharing with the outside world our story, I found that the more, it's not a matter of the more I share, but who I'm sharing it with. And so my next question is, should we be mindful of who we are sharing it with? Because I'm finding now in my experiences, some of the individuals that I'm sharing it with are projecting their um, their reality onto me, their, their shutters, their limitations, their conditioning onto me, which I've noticed after I've had conversations with them, how heavy I feel. And it's not from seeking validation or anything. It's just yeah, it's just a heavy feeling that I get. All right. So this is a good question. And there's actually, there's two things, there's two parts to this. So I'll come back to how do we know who we're supposed to be sharing with? I'll come back to that. But I just want to address that people projecting onto us because Carla, for you and just for people listening, when we start to step into our gifts, that's going to happen whether we're meant to be sharing or not. Right. So, uh, you know, f- for example, Carl, I shared with you this morning that, you know, I was expressing some of my gifts on, uh, on TikTok and some comments came through, right? Some comments came through about a particular topic and, and without going too deeply into it, you know, that, those, that, those comments that came through were very heavy, were very shadowy, very, you know, coming from a place of negativity. And I was definitely sharing in a space where I was aligned. Right, but it still came through. So the the mess, first message here for you, Carl, and for everyone is we're always going to attract projections. We're always going, once we step more into our light with our gifts, that light starts to expand and that light starts to attract the shadows, right? The shadows that we have the opportunity to alchemize. So what we must learn to do is, again, remember our choice, right? If someone projects something onto you and then you feel that heaviness, you are making a choice, whether it's consciously or unconsciously, to hold on to that. So if someone projects onto you, what you then can do is release that, right? Put up your boundaries, put up your energetic parameters, and and release and or decide to alchemize that negativity into light, right? So that's the first piece, and we always have that ability. We always have that opportunity to take that negativity and and either release it or alchemize it into light. Going back to your first question, though, in terms of how do we know who we're meant to be sharing our message with? And I'm going to make this very simple, but I'll add more to it, is we need to ask and check in with our intuition, and we need to ask with our, our, our spirit and our soul. And this is important for a couple of reasons. Firstly, we must understand that... We deserve to express our truth and our gifts in whatever way we, we, we see fit, right? As long as it's not hurting anyone, as long as it's not causing harm, if it's not doing those things, we deserve, you deserve to express your truth, right? Independent on people being there or not. But what we must also understand is that we have contracts with certain people, right? We have contracts with family, friends, even strangers, meaning that I might need to speak my truth in a particular environment or share my gifts in a particular environment for a certain person to see them, to see that for their awakening, for their journey, for their realization, right? And that's why they have those reactions. That's why they're triggered because there's a part inside of them that wants to embrace their light, but they they have their own healing to go on. So to make this less complicated, how we know these things is that we check in with ourselves. We ask ourselves, for example, do I need to express my truth today in that work environment with those people? And listen and feel. Don't get lost in your thoughts and your beliefs. Listen to that heart. Right? If you're going to a family dinner or a family event and you've, something has just happened really exciting in your life with your gifts and you're trying to work out, oh, is it time to share it with my family members who I obviously have soul contracts with? Ask yourself, ask that soul, is it time, am I ready to share my gifts and my truth, not just for me, but so they can be witnessed 
within my family for their own healing. Does that help, Carla? Oh, 100%. And I feel that when we're triggered or if someone is triggered by what we're saying or what we have to share, it it does help on our healing journey. And I think the opportunity presents itself, right, to when we should share something and if we should share something and whether or not, you know, that person's happy for us or not, or if they're going to project onto us or not, that's a choice that they have to make. And, you know, we have, and then we then have the choice. To meet that with love or meet that with resistance. And to react or respond, because there is a difference in the two. You know, reacting is from the ego, but responding is from love and from grace and acceptance. Good job. Exactly. You could not, I could not have said that better, my friend. And it's just, again, for everyone, a reminder that we always have that choice. Okay. In every situation, uh, we always had the choice. Am I making a choice from separation and more fear, more tension, or am I making a choice from love, from unity, from connection? Carla, what's next on your heart? Yeah. I need from protecting ourselves from that energy you you kind of answered it but but you know what practices in general can we use can we implement to protect ourselves from taking on and holding on to that negative energy to to release that i know for me personally i do a lot of deep breathing exercises but what what else can we do breath is a good one and mm-hmm. I'd highly recommend people lean into that, but I'll I'll give a couple others here. So if you're listening to this episode, there's a high chance that you are a highly sensitive, intuitive light worker that's doing that's you're on your own journey. And if you are like Carla, if you are not doing a daily chakra cleanse, you need to be doing that as a part of this mm-hmm. question. Right. And a daily chakra cleanse, what it looks like is simply and very quickly tuning into each of your energetic centers, tuning into the golden light of source and love above you and bringing that in through each and every one of them, feeling it and moving into the next one. Right. Don't get too complicated. Just focus in on the main seven chakra centers, feel and call to that light, feel it hitting each of those bodily areas and then finishing it off by releasing and and relieving yourself of any energy that's not serving you right you can ground it into mother earth it's always good to ask mother earth for permission to do so but then releasing that and letting go that's a big one right another one that i use is connecting into crystals connecting into crystals connecting into stones right right now here on this live people can't hear this but I'm actually people can't see this, but I'm actually holding a um, a grounding grounding crystal, and many 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 kinds of crystals that you can use. But I'd recommend building your relationship with the crystal uh, field, the crystal uh, ecosystem, because they have many gifts to give us, and one of those is the recycling and the re-energizing of our energetic field, right? And then the last one, and I'm going to share this here for everyone, for you too, Carla, is an actual affirmation that I use, right? And the affirmation is as follows. You tune into your heart, right? You tune into your soul in that heart space and you repeat the following. Dear soul, please lovingly clear me of all negative thought forms, disembodied spirits, souls, and entities that can block clear communication between you and I. Dear soul, please lovingly clear me of all negative thought forms and disembodied spirits, souls, and entities that can block clear communication between you and I. And that affirmation you can actually use, I use, so for you, Carla, for example, if you go into a work situation and you feel like there's been a lot of that projecting onto you, you can quickly use that affirmation to clear yourself of anything that's not serving you. I can, I, as you were saying that, I could feel the energy just shooting through the bombs of my feet and out through my toes. And 
my my fingers actually my hands feel tingly rather rather hot actually and 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 tingly yeah next up on your heart my friend what's coming through and i'd encourage you carla you know a lot of these questions that are coming through you i know you prepared a few here but you know tune into the heart what else is coming through around these gifts right it doesn't have to be things that you've prepared it could also be something that's coming through in this moment i've been i've been noticing lately just this overwhelming sense of just not rushing but this wanting to chase after my dreams right getting getting to that that point like i can just i see it in my mind's eye and once i i start tapping into that energy of a course for example i get so focused on it and it's almost as if my third eye starts tingling as well and start tapping into that energy and then all of a sudden i just start getting all these other downloads at the same time and sometimes it's hard to keep track of everything and it becomes so overwhelming sometimes and i remember when i first left work back in april <laughs> Two weeks later, I was just, once I released all that energy, because it was a toxic environment, released all that energy, and I just felt grounded and centered again. It was just like, it, it all, and, and like I said, I became so overwhelmed. Yes. So Carla, let me jump in here. So what's hap- what's happening, and this, and this is, this goes back to the question you asked before, but I'll add more to it. We must realize that when we start to ex- connect and express our beautiful gifts in the way that we deserve, we start to remember that we are a channel. And what I mean by this, right? And I know a lot of people out there listening have a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings of what it means to be a channel, right? So let me define it here for you, right? Each and every single person on this planet is a channel. Right, we are always channeling, but the question is, what are we channeling? Most of us are channeling our pain. Most of us are channeling our limiting beliefs. Most of us are channeling our wounded inner child. Most of us are channeling our mother, our dad, our father, our the belief systems of our religion, of our culture, of the things that we see on the media. So we forget that we are the beautiful open channel. What we start to realize, Carla, and you're, that's what you just experienced here, is that there is actually a choice that we can make to actually be a channel for more of our higher states of consciousness, more of our divinity, more of our pure creative love. So when we make a seemingly simple choice of changing a work environment, what you're doing, Carla, maybe for the first time in a long time, is you're now actually starting to channel your divine self. You're starting to channel the light aspects of you that have been waiting for, again, who knows how long to be embodied through the physical form. This is beautiful. This is wonderful. At the same time, and this is what you experienced, Carla, it can be very overwhelming because with much like I'll use the example of, we talked about this on the inner child episode, that when we start to actually start to emotionally heal, people get the symptom of I start to cry for days, right? I start to cry for days and days. And it's and it's not the crying that's the issue. It's how long you've been storing and suppressing the actual state of being. So it's the same here, Carla. It's once we start to express and embody our gifts and remember the divine channel that we are, we must remember that most of us need to ease into this. Right. Most of us need to take this one step at a time and not feel like we need to take the entire channel and all the creative ideas and all the inspiration and need to do it all. We don't need to do it all. The only thing we ever have to do, Carla, and for all the beautiful souls listening, is the step that's right in front of us. So to make this very practical for you, Carla, and for everyone listening, in this situation, this is where we prioritize the physical body. Right from the energetic perspective and the root chakra, the root center helps us 
bring safety, support, and security to our spiritual being. So if we're feeling overloaded by all the creation energy that's moving through us, how we can bring balance to that is by taking a break, focusing on the physical being, right? This could be movement. This could be getting out onto the earth. This could be connecting into some nourishing food. This could be resting, sleeping, you know, all of the things that prioritize the physical. So we're then able to hold the channel, hold the divinity, the creation that's moving through us and feel strong enough to then take action, inspired action on the one thing that's needed. I love that. And a friend of mine at the time has had told me, you got to get out of the house. Get get out of the house, go for a walk. Like you said, get out in nature. And I had looked up nature trails in the, in my area. And I was just drawn to this one. And I got in a car and I went and he was just like, give me a call when you get there. And I called him when I got there and I'm like, I'm here. And he's like, you actually did it. <laughs> and, and and it was the best 45 minutes to an hour I've I've had in I couldn't even tell you how long. And I'm so grateful for all all those downloads, that that overwhelm, because I look at it from the perspective of my soul, my higher self taking that deep breath that, that exhale that I've just been holding in for those past 17 years that I've been in that job saying you've finally taken the step that you've been meant to do and here's these gifts here are your dreams your aspirations and all these things that you're meant to be doing and it was even though it was all that one time, it's like, wait, how do I keep track of all this? What am I supposed to do first? You know, it's not coming from a place of not being grateful. I am just beyond grateful and beyond humbled for it all. It's And, you know, once I came back, it's like, okay, I made a list of everything. And I said, okay, this is what, you know, my life purpose looks like. This is what, you know, I want to accomplish. What now? What action can I take to accomplish all this? And it's just been a beautiful journey ever since. And it's, it's wonderful, Carla. And again, that happened, that sequence of event happens because you put that physical first, right? You put that human first in that overwhelm. And then I was able to give you clarity on the spiritual uh, waterfall that was coming through, right? Uh, Carla, thank you. For being with me here today i hope this supported you i hope this gave you some extra guidance and some love from your heart i hope this helped the beautiful beings out there listening on your own awakening your own gifts and expression journey uh anything any final words any final pieces of love you want to share here carla before we close up uh, just gratefulness and love for everything that you've done for me over the past few weeks it's just the journey has just been expanded upon even more. And I, if there was one thing I could share with a collective, follow your heart. Don't be afraid to tap into that, that love of yourself. Magical things will happen because that's what you're made of. Magic and love. And when you tap into that, you're unstoppable. What a beautiful place to end it. Carla, I love you very much. Thank you for being here today. I love you, beautiful souls, for listening. And thank you for your attention, your time, your energy here with us. Remember, if this gave you some value today, please share this out with people that you love very much. If you want to be on the show, you want to be part of these community coaching episodes, please leave your feedback and reviews over on Apple and Spotify, and I'll pick the next beautiful being. But regardless, we love you unconditionally and we'll see you next time here on the show. Bye everyone. All right, beautiful souls. Before I leave you today, I'm excited to share an announcement and a powerful transformation with you. Starting on January 1st, 2023, I'll be launching a one-year coaching program one-on-one -on -one with me. So if you're looking to 
move through inner child wounds, ancestral healing, spiritual gifts, overcoming religious trauma, or anything else you hear me speaking about on this podcast, then this program is for you. This is your opportunity to spend a year in my frequency to help you expand one-on-one straight into your nuanced, specialized, and individual needs. This is for you if you're ready, if you feel committed, if that heart is pulling you to the change that you deserve. If you feel like this is you, please message me the word, the comments, the statement, one year love on my email or on my social channels, and we'll book your free call to feel in and tune in together to see if we're a good fit for this beautiful transformation. Please be aware I'm only bringing on a certain amount of people for this. So if this is you, please take this advantage before I fill up all my spots. I'm excited if this is the pull that you need, and I'm excited to get in touch and honored to take this journey with you. Sending love, sending light, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Love Antenna Podcast. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to follow Harrison on Instagram, Twitter, and Clubhouse at Harrison Ma. That's Harrison, M-E-A-G-H-E-R.